Okay, co-pilot, we're approaching the end of that move. Let's uh, go ahead and put in another one. We need to get up the hill, I think. I agree. Keep things moving here. I'm sure Levi can keep up, even though he keeps finding so interesting pilot, stuff. So, pilot, did you guys just switch out? We did. We did. It's it's typical that we'll split the watch. And the scheduled pilot will start the watch, and then halfway through the pilot and co-pilot will switch positions and get a different uh, different style sometimes of piloting. Hey, video frame up. I think we've seen this one before, so yeah. let's do a quick. This is um, sure thing. Ambalula. This is a deep sea sea pen. Um, you'll see the uh, different polyps, each one with eight feeding arms. Um, there's a uh, connected pharynx uh, that leads away from the mouth at the center of each polyp. And uh, this is all part of a colony, which uh, is rooted uh, down there. You can sort of just out of sight, bridge, but rooted with kind of a large uh, bridge. bulb that uh, anchors it in the okay. sediment. Video come out. There's a bunch of the foreground, actually. I just want to make sure right. I saw this. Come back in. I think this is also similar to one we've seen. Yeah. Live. It's um, a sponge of some kind, but uh, similar to polyopagon, a glass sponge. You can see the roots or the uh, attachment points on the uh, bottom. But uh, I have a bit more I'll leave that for the other crest to worry about. I think we've seen this before, video, <laughs> okay. so yeah. I saw something. I have to keep moving. And I saw something. So. Go ahead now. Right up here. Zero meters, bearing zero three zero speed, decimal two. So we've got two subjects here, maybe. Maybe a dead stock. We'll see. Coming in. RV average move of three zero meters, bearing zero two zero speed, decimal two. Bring it up. Roger. Copy, break. So this is, uh, again, another uh, sea pig, a kind of sea cucumber, probably in the genus Amperima. You can see the uh, tube feet that are sort of uh, there on the lower side, and that okay, side on yeah. the left, that's where the feeding tentacles <coughs> are pressed up against the ground. Um, you can actually see it picking up little sediment particles and pushing them into its mouth. Uh, from there, it goes into the intestine, which you can literally see going through its body that uh, proceeds down uh, as it's digested slowly throughout the intestine, the lower intestine, where it's defecated out the other side. Um, these are kind of like earthworms. They kind of pick out all the organic materials before uh, the uh, cleaned inorganic sediment Keep is deposited here. on the, on the sure. surface. Making way up the hill. Hope you had a good enough look, watch lead. Making tracks, getting up the hill here. You know, it's kind of interesting that we're seeing that here in an area that has less sediment cover. We've moved into a different habitat with uh, more uh, uh, regular uh, uh, rock. Uh, yeah, a sort of hard. That have broken up. Yeah, a hard, a regular hard bottom. But there's still a fair amount of uh, sedimented cover and uh, ooze falling from the surface, so. Crying yeah, it seems like it's less favorable fish habitat now because of the yeah, lack of sediment that it would be a, a home for some of the small invertebrates that the fish would forage on. Yeah, and the last fish familiar? that we saw was yeah, one that uh, forages more on the water uh, rather than along here. the bottom. No, this is yeah, we can move on, pilot. Yeah, we okay. see these things. Yeah. That's just a Mato okay. and uh, a uh, feather star. We should look at this yellow yeah. branching coral up ahead, though. I think there's two possible aridogorgia. Yeah. Let's see. So heads up to Scott France. We're just coming up on a yellow branching cor uh, coral colony. Uh, there's actually two octocorals here. One looks like aridogorgia, and the other one looks like something that yes. I could I'm take Scott, a guess Scott, at. Okay, video frame them up. I hope uh, my student James Aubrey is still watching because this might be an Ah, okay. It's always dangerous to make a guess when we're so far out, but 
Um, he is uh, currently doing his uh, PhD dissertation on the family of Cantagorgiidae, and as we speak, he is hey, at the yeah, in your home yeah. institution, going through the collection looking for a Cantagorgiidae. <laughs> Small world. So uh, we have a zoom on this. Uh, there are uh, some uh, fly trap anemones, like, uh, as well as its obligate um, ophiroid or snake star associate. Uh, but uh, do the uh, polyps give you that acanthagorgia vibe? Copac, can you take my rotator? Um, got it. Not really. Uh, Let's see what we <laughs> so were interested. Got excited there as we're coming in. So I, I think this is probably a member of the that. family Plexoridae. Oh, really? So this yep, is yep. one of Osaka's. Yeah. Day. This would be your classic sea fan or Gorgonian fan that uh, uh, folks who have been snorkeling in the Caribbean or the Red Sea or lucky enough in Australia may have seen lots of these uh, beautiful colored <laughs> sea fans in uh, shallow water. Uh, they have a skeleton that's uh, much more composed of protein, um, unlike the bamboo corals and the chrysogorges we've been seeing where there's a lot more calcium carbonate. And what you can see here is that the skeleton is covered by this thick tissue called the cenochyme, and you can clearly see the polyps protruding from there. They have this different okay, colors like of yellow. They can be withdrawn all the way down. into it, yeah, uh, into the scenicine. Use my joystick. Just at the base reach of over the if you the aim your camera down you to. See that there's some just white off your screen. Yeah. Those are uh, sclerites. Yeah, like and when it's retracted, they can yeah. form this little, okay. uh, what's called a collarette. I'll give you your so you camera back. Okay. To kind of you're not, you're not where the trouble uh, here. Okay. collar retracts. Excellent. And there's also a series of anemones, and uh, I'm going to let you gotcha. talk about the opioids. Oh, no worries. Uh, this is a, an opioid in the family Ophiocanthidae. It looks slightly different from the ones that we've been seeing. Let's, uh, I'd like to get zoom out a little bit. Can we see yeah, that little bit. yellow thing that's off to the to the left there? Yellow thing off Next to the uh, Ophiroid. Yeah, come back in video. Sorry. We're yeah. Small amount of time here, but oh, we'll I get see. it. Well, oh, gotcha. Is that Max Zoom? Yeah, yeah. so okay. this is just something I wanted yeah, to fine. mention yeah. real quickly because it's so cute. Oh, it's um, this little yellow thing that on the left that looks like a stocked crinoid, uh, that is what's called a pentacrinid larva. This is the juvenile form of the feather stars that we've been seeing, uh, and this shows very nicely the Are relationship the between the stock right and the unstocked okay. forms, because this is right, when they become uh, we'll, uh, adults, those little capsules uh, uh, the like plus can, the uh, feathers it, sort of take it's off. Okay. okay. Clear. Um, let's uh, take a quick look at the... Oh, are we leaving? Uh, yeah, unless you... Yeah. No, that's fine. Okay. This, the Ritagorgia is one we've seen before. Great. Video switching up. Thanks, video. Ooh, fish. All right, the video switches out. All right, it's all right. I'll, uh, Just try to frame it. Yeah, if you don't get too close, he'll... he'll this out. fish? Oh, this fish is another one of our uh, cutthroat eels, one of these large well, eels in the genus Synapobrancus. Yeah, right. I don't know if we can kind of zoom fish. in and see the Switch position of the beginning of the dorsal fin. Yeah. That would give us a clue as to the species. Track. But it looks like it's moving away. Um, these uh, get a very active eel, so uh, it looks like it's got a little uh, bit of uh, man. The skin it. on its lower well, jaw abraded away. It's probably been digging around looking for food. It looks like the dorsal yeah, fin origin is far yeah, back yeah, on the yeah, body. Following. Yep. I'm waiting for it here, um, it which right would out. indicate, no, actually it's head. not that far back. It's about over the anal fin origin, the fin on the uh, bottom of the fish. So that would mean that this is Sinapobrancus uh, affinis yeah. as the species. Yeah. Um, Ken Sulak, who's a specialist yeah, in this group of eels, describes yeah. them as having an evil it's smile. Cool. He considers so that so one of the identifying yeah. characters of the uh, uh, genus. So again, these are uh, top predators in the system. They might consider them to be some of the tigers of this ecosystem, uh, preying on uh, crustaceans right, and polychaetes and small fish and probably whatever they can else they can cool. grab right. with their... Uh, uh, needle-like and canine-like teeth. So a cutthroat eel like in the genus Synapobrancus. I think we can pull Thanks, a couple Bruce. shots out of that, though. And we're moving on. Pretty good shots, pilot. Okay, you're at 3-6. Yeah, you're still behind me there. Let me try, like, you're maxed out. Coming up the hill here. Get a quick zoom on this white yeah, video tulip thing on the right. Snap on this on our way through. I think it's a possible. Uh, okay, it's a dead stock. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Watch lead this snap. 
Watch it, this is now. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. All right, so you're back What's up? two six camera angles. Uh, are you on watch lead two? Or? Okay, All so right. um, from my lead. last navigator. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, here we go. Oh, we see the red. Uh, yeah, coral. I'll set up for. Since I just got in here, I don't know what we have or haven't seen. Copy. We saw him about this big, I think. No. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. All right. Video, we can frame this up. Watch it. Did you need a closer look at this? Have we uh, seen this? this? Is, no, we've seen this. We've this seen is an anthem okay, All right. We'll keep moving video as Thank we're you. trying to get up the hill. And Sirius is already still looking down at me a little bit. 65 degrees. 65. Uh, there's a large colony over here on the left. Yeah. It's dead. Looks like a bamboo a coral. Um, <sighs> but all the tissue is gone. A little tilt up. Yeah. There's some live tissue. Wow. Oh no, the tissues, there's still some at the tip. Let's take a quick look at that real quick video. Partial. Yeah. I'm going to get closer to it. No doubt you're looking for a hippie steroid or something. Well, I'm kind of wondering if this okay, might be evidence of a hippie steroid. Uh, part of the alive section here. Yeah. Sure. I'll try to do it while floating. I think it's going to be the. Yeah, go ahead, Ed. Yeah, it's kind of a ratty looking one, isn't it? That's still alive, though. Does this look familiar, Scott? I'm still waiting for no. the zoom. Oh, gotcha. <clears throat> something yellow wrapped around. I don't know if there's a nudibranch, but what I'm looking at, I see something yellow-orange. Looks like it's wrapped around the base of one of the polyps. I'm trying to figure out where the current's doing in the video. Sorry. Uh, a couple of <clears throat> I think I see what you're seeing, but it's... Orange? Yeah. It's just a stain. Um, if, can we zoom in? There's a little yellow red thing on right, one video. of those polyps. Try to go for the dark red zone here. Yeah. Go video. Yep. Got a small window. Yeah, tilt a couple tilt. of them. Uh, I'll just rise. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm not this, sure. Um, this Try to do this while floating. Uh, which would yeah. make it our ahead, third yeah. uh, bamboo whip of the day, our third kind of bamboo coral whip of the day. Okay, they've tried another. Doesn't look uh, evident. Whatever it is, maybe it's a flatworm or some other thing. Yeah. I it's can't even tell if it's something on there or if it's something in the tissue. It appears to be embedded in the tissue. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you're right, Roland. We can move on. Well, this one is growing for a long time. It may be on its last legs, but okay, yeah. uh, it's a very, very long, Sorry, tall colony. Shot. Which yeah, pretty cool looking colony though, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> From this angle, or maybe there's a natural yeah, end right. to these things. Oh, go. Hard to say. That one's very long. If it was all you straight. You floated airplane yeah. before. Okay. I will say, uh, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we looks like we have another nice uh, branching colony over to the left here. Fuzzy on the right, I don't know if it's oh, just fish. a rock. Let's grab fish. Oh. That was a small Snap. fish, okay. I'll do my best, Jerry. Bruce, we got, a, we got one for you. Good luck. Take zoom in if you got it. Of course, he's looking away from us. I'd stepped away for a moment, but uh, we have a small uh, grenadier here in the family of Acuridae. They're also called rat tails. Um, this could be in the genus Kumba, uh, which we see frequently, at least something that we okay. call that, although we're this not sure about the identification, ahead. a round-headed little animal. Uh, again, the uh, scales on the head help us determine what the genus is. I don't know if it's possible to zoom in on that. Max, uh, uh, this right looks now, a little, a little uh, different. Max that genus named Kumba uh, sounds uh, kind of African in origin. It's sure, right, actually yeah. an anagram of the, the, the uh, abbreviation of the, the uh, Marine Biological Association of the United Kingdom. Uh, the yeah, they're named by a uh, well-known scientist over so, uh, at the uh, British Museum, uh, N.B. Uh, Marshall, Freddie Marshall, who uh, did a lot of early work on deep sea biology. Uh, I just want to and, confirm, uh, hey, uh, Nam's uh, bailout so, is uh, 180. Great, thank you.
<coughs> Thank you, Bruce. Good Hello, Bruce Mundy from you. the uh, Inouye Regional Center. Um, he's an ichthyologist who is very familiar with the fish fauna of this area. So uh, we're coming up on a fairly a large squat lobster once we um, yep. squat lobster coral colony Hi. here with a number of associates. Um, right, colonies and, uh, like this uh, and get, those of uh, the sponges I can get closer. Uh, essentially like. form kind yeah. of uh, ecosystems unto themselves because they uh, play host to so many different other kinds of animals. This coral, for okay. example, uh, when we find out what it is, uh, there are some parts of it that are dead, okay. and um, yeah, when he lives off, some of it uh, has become host to a number of hydroids, which are those oh, fine branching structures on the left, and also this uh, large squat lobster in the center, and also to a feather star on the right. Ooh, actually, yeah, Chris, this is another video. bamboo coral. Um, this is the first we've seen this. today of this particular species, uh, but we have been seeing this, ah, this um, somewhat regularly on, the, uh, on this leg. And I'll just note its size. So, so just like that width that we were looking at, this is another is. one that is really large and so must be very old. And one of the ways we tell that is the diameter of the base of the colony. You can see that the branches are arising um, in most cases, I think from the node, although sometimes it looks like it's branching from the internode, seems to have it's both. I'm not left. sure if that's because right, with so. age, the calcium carbonate of the white internode overlays the node, and so it looks like it's an internodal brancher. It's unclear. Um, but I suspect this is in the J clade. Ah, very good. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you, Scott. I'm Maybe back from out a bit video, and we'll see if there's any other associates that are interested in. Got some, it's got some hydroids on it too. What's that and red thing over here? So that's a nice Green way to come back to lunch. No, small to red ball. Find a decent it. colony. Jellyfish. Ah, good spot. Ooh, jellyfish. <coughs> that makes him. Poss possible jellyfish. All right, Chris, you want to tell him about this, or you want me to tell him about it? Um. I believe this is Helicreus. Is it? Is that the genus, or is that the other benthic jellyfish? That I think maybe we're calling this uh, Aegina. Aegina. That's right. I'm sorry. Yes. So why don't you, since I got the the name wrong, why don't you <laughs> continue? Well, uh, I think Scott knows more about these guys than I do. But I'll go ahead and throw this out. Um, First time I've ever seen one of these Got things since 2015. Yeah, I was very and delayed on the it's camera control. It's tiny little jellyfish. It wasn't responding. Uh, the family oh, okay. Aeginidae, that's what everybody thinks it is at least. It's just got a four, I think four little tentacles coming out of the end of it. And it lands on corals and it feeds on the corals. This is a coral predator, if you can believe that. And it just lands on one polyp and apparently it sort of sucks out the polyp kind of like the your sea spiders do like the other day right <laughs> yeah um there's also one polyp in the background which seems to be missing its tentacles uh so that's potentially where this jellyfish has been uh having its lunch <coughs> i think i think i saw that one just retract or fold over the tentacle because it may be that you know sensing danger nearby but um yeah, Chris, we saw these uh, four or five times in 2015. Video's First clear. time I've ever okay. seen yeah, it, but we kept regularly seeing these small jellyfish associated with the polyps. So she's um, All these with uh, the mouth over the polyps, so the right there was yeah. that idea that maybe they're feeding on the polyps. But this one, I can't tell that the mouth is actually oriented towards the coral polyp. I'm, I'm not exactly sure uh, what I'm seeing there. Yeah, maybe what goes around comes around, if that's the expression. The polyps feeding on it for a change. I might have caught it. You know, I don't know. All right, watch these. Is there anything else you wanted to see? Can we zoom down on the bottom? Yeah. I'm just curious to see if there's any uh, little ju juvenile crinoids down there. Um, to the right, perhaps. Huh? No, well, on an earlier uh, coral we were looking at, it had a little pentacrinid larva, a little juvenile crinoid, like a little stocked crinoid living down near the base. And it made me think that maybe, uh, you know, they settle out there and then they... Uh, can pop their little oh, cup, bridge. Uh, feather star aspect and just they just climb up onto uh, yes, the uh, adults. Uh, no, so, no, no, I don't see it. That's, that's good. Thank like you. Okay, five degrees to starboard. Yes, uh, Thank you. Looks like they're going to make a heading change. Very slight. Okay. 
75 degrees. I'm looking at 75 degrees here. Copilot, permission to zoom on Sirius? Yes, permission granted. I'll keep some light on for just a second. Tilting down. There you go. Every time I see that camera zoom, it makes me nervous about Delta. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Delta's 15. I know. Degree, I, you're fine. I know. Because you never, it's not you know, typically see it zoomed in. But. Continuing to head up slope. All right. So this is your chance to show off here. Dab, watch lead. Um, Chris just told me that you had a question about where we might expect some of the denser community. Is that correct? Up a switch. You can just go ahead and drive off, pilot. Drive out of the scene. Um, I was kind of hoping to see him now, but <laughs> um, could you zoom out and let's take a look at the contour map a little bit, please? Serious is full wide. All right, thanks, Will. Well, Tilting I up. think we got a shot if we can get up into those tighter and tighter contours and a little What's steeper that? terrain. Heading changes complete. Let's maybe call that would uh, uh, maybe that would get us into something. Yeah. I'm pretty yeah, surprised. I can't left to look at you. Ooh, already video so snap far, a fish, possibly the same one we saw. That makes him. Roger that. Thank you. That is. So this is yeah. another rat tail or grenadier of the same uh, genus that we saw earlier, and uh, uh, unclear as to what, what it is exactly. I tossed out that uh, identification of the genus uh, Kumba before. Unfortunately, this one's uh, yes, so are. quickly we, in the current uh, that uh, we can't get a good shot of its head uh, to help us with the scale pattern that would identify the yes, genus. But uh, tentatively in the genus Kumba. Uh, Chris Kelly, do you have other thoughts? No, it's just that um, these little things that we call Kumba, they seem to be yeah. All right, co pilot. Uh, it brown, seems like black, he's done with a heading kind of change. Uh, uh, I don't know if you want to move or you want to sure. stay a little bit more. We need to keep moving. Okay. Um, they've been very, very uh, dark colored. We can't call them remember they are kind of 20 meters or 25. Do you want the whole 30? Let's do 30 meters at black. Is that your impression too? Zero one five. Maybe I they think they do have a lot of morpho morphological plasticity on their color. That gets us. Uh, can we zoom in on that worm in the background? Uh, oh yeah. Take a couple of fish. Thirty meters. Zero one five coming up. Zoom out a little bit. Uh, so, the other science is just has to hold on the fish. Uh, I'm not sure that we can get close okay. enough to this the fish to really see much more than we're seeing now. Edgy key. Uh, so probably, I don't know, unless it turns with its head facing us. Yeah, oh, there he goes. He's turning sideways. Range three zero meters, bearing zero one five. That's max zoom. Speed zero decimal two knots. I have just a little bit more, not much. Coming up. Okay. I suppose That's it could be a small Nazumia species too. There are a number sports. of species in that mm -hmm. genus in this part of the world. Uh, you're getting a pretty good shot, Bruce. Um, still too much you can Get a yeah. good enough shot for a nice still. Thank you, pilot. I appreciate it. What was the thing that you wanted to? There was a polyhedra or something in the background <coughs> of where we were looking at it. Right up against that ledge, you mean? It was in the little uh, sediment valley or whatever. Oh, that's fine. Unless I don't remember. Those are pretty is cool. We can move on. Bridge, fine. move initiated. Should be right here. Unless you know where it yeah. is exactly. It's right here. Bottom, Bottom of the screen. So, oh, it? there it is. Oh, I see what you're looking at. Okay. So there's some um, swimmers, there's flotos, and Copy. is this a squatter? <laughs> I don't know. It's this is pretty small. I did not think I was going to find it back. <laughs> yeah, neither did I. Yeah, it looks kind of like a. Um, it's weird. It's got the oh. Okay, so this is a. I think the one of the. Uh, uh, what do they call these? Um, yeah, you're right. Uh, don't you think? Was that? I was about to say like Nacrocerid. It looks like a combination of errant polychaete and a tube-dwelling polychaete. And I wonder if it's the polychaete that captured a jellyfish or something. This is Max Zoom, right? Yeah. yeah. I could try to get closer, but I'm worried I'm going to lose no, track of it. No, that's fine. Okay. I'd, I'd, I'm wondering if it might be an Nacrocerid, but... Uh, 
He just popped in front of that one rock. I suppose we haven't seen any swing polychaetes today, so yeah. we'll let it go. Here for a while. Have we seen this sponge today? Watch this. Yeah, but there's something in it. Yeah. So why don't we go ahead and snap it on this? Absolutely. Living inside. Some curious beasts. Okay, video. Snap. Um, I'd say. Barnacles? I don't know. I mean, it looks like the right uh, color for barnacles. Top down view. So this Pilot. is a Dictyolus uh, glass this. sponge. It's got a little bit of time, not much. Family Euplectelidae. There's something pulsing on the inside, though. I think where, I can see it? some claws. There's some. There's some. Bottom of the light. Some of those dark spots open and close. Yeah, I see there. Right there. Oh, yeah, there's some holes in the. But then what's the op the thing that Chris is pointing out there? What is that thing that's pulsing there? It's quite well, obviously. You see, be... you see what I'm saying? Yeah, right? I saw yeah. what you were saying. Yeah. I don't know what you were. Oh, uh, so it was just the movement. No, there's the... another one. <coughs> huh. That's pretty weird. So there's something in There's more than a couple of things in you're there. You're clear. I might try to look down it um, real quick. Yeah, you got it. Great. Thank you. I don't know if that's going to work, but we'll I try it. Probably have more luck with HD2. I think. Okay, I got about 36 degrees here. You know, whatever these things uh, are, they definitely right, didn't get the memo. Yeah. The one on the left. Yeah. Well, the <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't get the memo. You're, you've got to beware of living in glass sponge yeah, houses. Oh. <laughs> that one just came right out of third field. Let it field. go. <laughs> What's that? Left field. Let it go. Get it with HD2, yeah. maybe. Could try it. I saw it. Um, I just wanted to suggest that they could be paired so. shrimp okay. that live. Uh, they could be, Bruce. I don't I don't really know. Yeah, I guess I'll try to work What's that? two flare. Oh, in the background? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, both of them was right, I think, in the background there. Watch this. If you look at HD2 of the mini Zeus, we're looking down that sponge right now with a different camera, not the main HD, but the second HD. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah. Does that give you a better look? I'll put it up on yeah. the Oh, here we are over here. Uh, Bruce Mundy was suggesting up. some type of paired shrimp that sometimes live in there. Oh, that, wow, that's touchy. Yeah. Open it. Uh, open that it. gives us a good look, but open I'm still it. curious. Open Thank it. you. That's maximum. And here's the thing, um, they look pretty big, and the sieve plate is now completely covering the osculum, and that's that grid you see over the pilot. hole in the spine. I think it's so about as good as I'm going to be able to get. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, pilot. Well, push yeah. focus down inside. So they're not going to be able to get There's out of something in that there for sure. They're there for life. Right now I'm focused uh, on the shrimp itself. Up inside of it. Uh, that's they, ran, they got in as larvae, they and yeah, because it's they've spent their entire life. And not quite as used, but... They're making a living there, and they're totally protected. So Give us about 10 more seconds, then we'll call it. It's probably not a bad idea to find a place like this. All right. Video when you're clear. Hi, guys. This is Mary Wixon joining you late. Thank you. Good I think time. you may have a couple of sponge of carrot shrimp. Sponge of what shrimp? Excuse me, Mary? It's called sponge carrots. They only live in deep sea sponges. Oh, okay. And they do have long scissors. Sponge carrots. Okay, so they bridge. do have long uh, pincers. Is that what you said? Yeah. Cover bridge. Uh, just FYI. They do. They have the, uh, and they have hook claws, which I saw at one point for a hang off the side. 20. It's a nice spiral yeah. hole coming up. So have you seen these Copy before, that. Mary? Um, is Mary Wixley, let me know by if you want to change, make any Texas changes. That's right. This any changes. Okay, we're, yeah, we're yeah, fine. Yes, I have, but they're very Copy. rare. All right, video, come in. We're going to try floating pirouette support. Huh. I'm, I'm actually typing your ID into our event log right now because um, that will be pretty pretty useful. So it's spongicarity. Is that what it would be the family? Spongicarity, is that right? Double check. Thanks, Mary. So 
So Mary Wickstein is an expert on arthropods, and she's been a huge resource for the Okeanos uh, explorations. Um, she will often send me emails with ideas of a lot of the stuff that we've encountered, which is very much appreciated. And those ideas make their way into our uh, Okeanos animal, animal All right, guide. Vinny, what other hey, shots would you pilot? like for this? There's right, a, good. something in the background uh, there. It might be, it's wiggling around. I think it might be a, is it a jellyfish? Uh, like to the right, upper right. That guy? Oh, no, it's just some some mucus. Never mind. So Thank you. Down <laughs> here. Yeah, that's real small. I'd say probably good with this. Okay. Maybe pirouette around the Thank spiral. You. Yeah. Unless they good. want something more. We've got a big coral in the upper left highlight. I think I Rita saw it. Possibly, yeah. yeah. Gorgia. That wow. That's a nice one. I don't, I don't think you, see, you didn't see this when I was at lunch, right? This? Was first one? Yeah. I mean, they... Coral of this type. Yeah, we saw we saw it in a Ritagorgia. It was a smaller one. Oh, I see. Yeah, this uh, one's a nice colony, though. Yeah, this is beautiful. <coughs> we okay, actually those shrimp are actually in a family called the Spongicolidae. Spongi They're called glass sponge shrimp. Spongicolidae. Okay. You want to work it with a partial? Uh, just yeah, change we're the with a idea on that. This is a possible Ritagorgia. So, Mary, why are they so rare? We see a we lot of these vase sponges. And it's just so that not very many of the vase sponges get populated by these shrimp. I'm going to be interested in those orange depth range to find the them upper that really right. Dive in or what's, what do you think the issue is? Well, you have to have both a male and Let's a female going. arrive as larval stages and enter the sponge. So, first of all, they have to find the sponge, which is isn't common, and get to the sponge. Uh, okay. And then they have to get to the sponge. They'll probably be interested in those orange ones in the sponge. Okay. I think I have a better view from this side anyway. I hadn't really thought about that. That's right. I guess, um, well, I guess, hmm, okay. So then they would reproduce inside the sponge, and then the larvae would be able to make it out through the, the opening of the sponge, and just probably out through the top, right, because the larvae would probably get possibly trapped inside the sponge tissue, so I guess it would go right out through the top. That's right. But very few specimens have ever been collected. They may be more common than we think. I see. Well, we'll keep our eye out for, um, you know, some of these, some more of these vase sponges, and maybe we can get a better look at these. And uh, if the red ones, well. pickings sure. are really lean, and we're not, um, we're not finding any, any uh, real. Biologics. Right, uh, well, actually, it wouldn't be a bad idea to get one of these sponges anyway, but we certainly could consider it oh, yeah. for oh, collection. Right? Very nice. Um, so we've. I'm sorry, Chris. Did you want to? Yeah, I just finishing oh, up okay. with Mary. So thanks very follow. much for calling the in, Mary. Mary Wickstein so from Texas A&M, an and arthropod it. expert. So we are focusing in on an Aridogorgia, but uh, we've although. Uh, very beautiful. The things that we're looking at precisely are what's called benthic tenophores, or also called benthic comb jellies. Um, when we see these animals, typically okay. they're swimmers. They swim around, and you can see little uh, rows of paddles that propel them through the water. Um, they're, but uh, but these differ in that they actually want? live on a substrate. Uh, uh, we saw we've been seeing them on and off throughout yeah. the dive. Some are larger than others. Uh, this particular group has One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's easily a dozen of them on yeah, these a uh, arm. Pink on these lower arms. section. Okay. So, oh, yeah. About uh, that. Yeah. And so, uh, it, it, yeah. it's uh, yeah, if you got it. interesting. And it looks like we also have some other commensals. Oh, we have a, a snail? Or yeah, it looks like a snail living, or okay, possibly almost. a hermit yeah. crab. It's oh, maybe. Let's see. What is it? Or one of those apocopters? No, what is no, it's that? No, it's definitely a shell, but, well, there's there's two things going on here. You're going to have to There's around. definitely an apocopter oh. in the front. Yeah. Well. Okay. It's, there's a shell of something with a shell in the back, so. I think we're a good pilot. Thank okay. you very much for that. Yeah. That was a neat little yeah, that was colony kind of, neat of little stuff. 
Beautiful Pilot. shots, Pilot. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's push on if you don't mind video and then see if we can get up to a little steeper terrain. See if we can get a little... Copilot, can we center up ground. HD2? So, um, tilt it up a little bit. So we're going to have a bit of a shift change here in the front row. So you're going to see us drift for just a moment as they... they Floater left. As the new group Small comes in and relieves line. the group that you've been... Coming to the bottom of the screen. That, that have been operating the ROV uh, right up until now so they can go and get some lunch. And we'll take the opportunity to remind everybody that this is a live broadcast from the NOAA ship Okeanos Explorer. We are now in the wonderful location in the Johnson Atoll. Never fails. <laughs> I should look and see exactly when 12 o'clock is, and I don't do that. But anyway, uh, we right. are in the Johnston Atoll yeah. unit of the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Need Monument. Need just went off right screen. And we are on a seamount that uh, was previously unmapped and pretty much unknown until a few hours ago, and we're exploring it for the first time. It's south of Johnston Atoll, the island itself. Could we pan over to the right, pilot, when you are settled? Thanks. Yeah, copy that. Thanks, Josh. And the title of our hey, pilot, how do you have me? here is La Lima Moana. Copy that. I have you loud and clear, too. referring to partnerships in the sea because these efforts... Just adjusting my Z bias here. These Okeanos cruise ep efforts, hey, video? if you will, uh, involve a considerable number of people in order to make them happen from so a variety of different the, institutions. The chance, Sean, we have onshore scientists all the way uh, from all like over the place. There, uh, we have GFO, GFO yeah, copy OE, that. Uh, Global Foundation for Ocean Engineering, Exploration, sorry, um, University of Hawaii. Sandy is a round rock uh, to the lower left. NCEI. Uh, what are we looking for? Name? There was a little red thing with that was on one of the rocks. Uh, it was a little to the right and further down. It's now centered where the lasers would be. It's now left. Uh, where is it relative to lasers? The red thing? Left of lasers. Oh, that's it. Yeah, that th that's it right there. That circle with the... Uh... Thanks, Josh. <laughs> I missed that. Yeah, that was Roland directing me. Oh, Roland, very good. Yeah. Thank you, Roland. Anytime. All right, pilot. Light bar is deployed yeah. all the way. Come on Uppers. In. Oh, a little an enemy. <laughs> we often see uh, sea anemones in the deep, but. Uh, of different species, but they're extremely hard to Maxim. identify because you actually need to conduct histology to uh, determine what type of uh, animal they are. Um, so, uh, but I, I'm always looking at these undersides because there's uh, jellyfish that live under them, and uh, they're not commonly seen. So, uh, always looking for something interesting and unusual. We can move on. Thank you. Right, come on up, video. Got a really good view of manganese crust. Okay, pilot, so we're going to continue moving up slope so roughly north to make our end waypoint. We need to average point zero seven knots. This is something that occurs Copy that in now. the deep sea. It, all these Quite minerals precipitate now. out of sea water. Yeah, and put all the rocky surfaces. Three hours, 40 minutes years. remaining. And that's Not what's covering all of the rocks here. And we did just have a gust over 20 knots, but forces are currently well aligned. Copy Pilot, that. Any chance you could identify the haircuts up there? <laughs> the haircuts? The haircuts, that's what I, because that's what we see is the back of your head. Oh, heads. okay. The problem <laughs> is they haven't been cut in a while. <laughs> okay, the non-haircuts. All right, so this is Joshua Carlson piloting D2. Um, to my left is... 
Dave Casagrande, navigator. And to my right is Sean Gennison, sitting co pilot. And on video. On screen right is Roland. And who do we have clipping? I'm Annie White, back in the back of the row. And we're all, we, are all, we are all engineers and videographers and editors for the Global Foundation for Ocean Exploration, also known as GFOE. Great. Thank you very much. And Branch Annie, curl off screen, upper right. I'm sorry, but we don't have that many jokes to tell, and so we're going to give one of your other ones. Okay. Yeah, we have to. So here it is. Um, so, Chris, I started a new business. Oh, and what business is that, Chris? I'm a marine mammal trainer, Chris. <laughs> oh, yes? So, did you want to know how well it's going? Yes, I do. Well, it gives me a porpoise. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, thanks to Annie White for that joke. We appreciate it, and that was our joke for the day. So Annie's to blame for your all's <laughs> humor. That's what I get for responding when he qu questions me in the hallway for a joke. Yeah, Roland, I, I think I may still be holding the worst joke of the cruise. Uh, all right, Megan, uh, she's got a joke. Who's that uh, white uh, thing? Let, uh, lay it on us, Megan. Put it right on the chat room. Let's, from me. We'll evaluate it. Should we get moving, co-pilot? Um, yeah, I think we go for those. I have a way for point at ahead. about zero one zero. Or, uh, zero two uh, zero would be fine too. Uh, 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 um, so I can rotate to one zero. I think it's anything in that general if you direction. I think it's fine. Zoom in right underneath it. You'll slope. see something really cool if you like sponges. That is. Okay. That is. This Go is pilot, a you ready base for that now? sponge. Uh, yeah. Believe that. And there's pretty stretched the funnel shaped base right underneath that sort of bridge nav. You're seeing that it attaches to the substrate. Can we get a ship move, please? Yeah. Three zero meters, bearing zero one zero, speed at zero decimal two. I don't, I, think, I don't think we've seen it in this cruise at all. We're not that seeing is it range very three zero, bearing but zero one zero, speed zero decimal two. But you rarely see the attachment and the base shape shot. of the sponge right. Copy. because right. it's folded over with all these petals, and you they can't see in. it. That one you could see. So there's the stock. And the vase kind of just opens up as sort of a flared funnel, and then it just goes crazy, and then just kind of opens up all over the place and creates this petal-shaped, flower-shaped sponge. Atlanticella, family Euplectility, first of those for the cruise. Thank you very much. That is terrific. All right, let's get a shove the laser. RV nav bridge, move initiated. Thank you, bridge. And bridge, I'm seeing wind up to uh, 20 knots, but as everything is lined up pretty well, I take it we're we're doing fine up there. Uh, that's correct, Nav. Uh, we're kind of chasing the wind a little so bit. So from our uh, chat room, sustaining uh, ashore, Megan McCullough, uh, uh, Max Gust, so far has been crying noise. Hits us with a Possibly. devastating and very joke. Right, thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, I come in, Roland. Oh, let's. But first, let's look at this crinoid. Uh, looks like a, a Proisocrinus ruberinus, a small one. Um, we've been seeing these all day today. They're really striking because they're uh, they're usually brilliant red. Okay, we can. Oh, this is a different yeah. one. Is it? Yeah. You think so? Uh, no, I one. don't think so. Yeah, it's a small okay. one. Sorry. No, no, that's all right. Uh, it's it's just a little underdeveloped, I think. Megan, that joke is absolutely ghastly. But so that means that we have to tell it. Chris, do you want to tell Megan? I would here? love to. Wow. Uh, wow! Did you guys see that cool sponge on the bottom left? The bottom left? No. You were just trying to distract you from the joke. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God! He was. Yeah, Stop let's. In here, Ron. No, he was fooling us. That's all. Oh, he didn't want to hear Megan's joke. But Chris, you're gonna lay it on everybody anyway, right? <laughs> So, Megan asks, what is a comb jelly's favorite time of day, Chris? I don't know, Chris. What is it? 10.04. Oh. <laughs> For those of you who don't, don't know what a comb jelly is, it's a 10.04 or 10.04. That's hey, the on. scientific name for it. Oh, my goodness. Bad science puns. Oh, well. <laughs> Okay, that was a barnacle that you just saw in a family, well, it's a scalpellet, I guess, a stocked 
barnacle. So, Sean, uh, when we're going up steep slope. Swimming jelly uh, just uh, above into the way right of that there. white dot. I, I, Maybe a hawthorium. I don't know what you're talking about, really. Left edge of screen. Just went behind the rock, right below the lasers. Barnacle belonging to a family called the Scalcality. So, as I was saying, Sean, uh, that's Mary Wickstein from um, Texas A&M. Thank you, Mary. We appreciate it. On steep terrain, when I'm like, we're going to go ahead and log that right now. The delta isn't as important. Yeah, no, I was more yeah. worried about tether. It's oh, not well, sinking below me. There's a decent purple, amount of heat. Uh, so that's about corals. as low as I want to get right yeah, yeah. now. No, I got you. But yeah, now I understand. Yeah. For next time, yeah. All right, come on in, Roller. We saw one of these earlier in a very diminished form. There was only oh. two polyps. But uh, a purple uh, octocoral is always a wondrous sight. I saw an enemy or something okay, under the rock. In, so did What's you. Purple octocoral? <laughs> it's right in front of you, Scott. That was a joke. That's the time oh. blue coral next to it. <laughs> Scott, can you tell us what this is? I would say that this is Victor Gorgia, which is a member of the, uh, we'll call it the suborder Sclerixonia, although that's, that suborder isn't formally recognized anymore, but that means it's closely related to the Paragorgia bamboo coral, uh, excuse me, uh, bubblegum coral that we saw earlier. It has to do with its skeletal makeup. So it is another octocoral, beautiful purple color. We don't see too many uh, purple octocorals down here in the deep sea. There's a few other species known. But this is something that we pretty regularly see once we get up above, uh, I'd say, 1,700, 1,600 meters or so in depth here in the Central Pacific. Yeah, thank you, Scott. Full screen. Coming up. So today we've seen a couple of the most beautiful uh, things that we encounter down here. We saw that beautiful Paragorgia, their bubblegum coral earlier. Co-pilot, do you think that's the slope are off pretty. to your this left guy, or just red uh, some local features? So we'll get another look at this bamboo. Uh, stand by, by one. Come on, uh, large, this, large the one close to center, that's, that's uh, small, two I've one seen that, that so I think earlier, that's a feature. Um, the a, other uh, one, let me do a slight Understood. rotate to port real quick. Might be a little far out to see oh, it. There's a see complicated mass of branches right there. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll I'm keep sure an eye on it. I'll let you know. And one of the things we were seeing in 2015 on occasion was some very, very strange branching. Um, and one of the best examples of that was on one of these trident candelabras where you always see the same branching pattern, but we saw something extremely unusual. We saw it on several A few more meters in that move. And it Copy. suggests that there's been an injury, and here we go. I can see tucked in there, it looks like there's an anemone. And in all cases where we saw this weird growth, it looked like there may have been an anemone or something growing on it. So I wonder if this is a ring anemone that disrupted the growth of the colony and caused it to branch out in very strange directions. Yeah, also, uh, beautiful imagery here of the tissue. And you can see very delicate, small sclerites. Uh, they're the white things that are reflecting in the uh, back right, of the tentacles bridge. and just Thank in you, between the tentacles. Thank you, Bridge. So you can see there are very short needles there, but they don't actually protrude. And so that's going to be another clue. Um, otherwise, the tissue seems pretty thick and hard to see through, which probably means that it's embedded with lots of scales. You may have heard uh, Les Watling talk about that the other day where scales would basically be um, relatively flat, uh, kind of football-shaped sclerites that are very densely embedded in the tissue and so prevent some of the light from transmitting through to see the skeleton very easily. So that might make this, um, well, I'm not sure, B, D. Okay. Thank you, Scott. <coughs> typing away here to get that into our annotation log. Okay. Another anemone growing there by another cluster of uh, branches. So this is a sort of observations that I'm really enjoying seeing is really going to help us understand when we see these 
aberrant growth forms of colonies, um, what might be causing it. And, you know, we were talking earlier, Chris, about the difficulty of annotating video to species when you Getting see very close. different yeah, species that have very similar growth morphology. Growth and then when you throw in these observations that show that different. possibly associates or predators can also have an effect on the growth, uh, and the growth pattern of the entire colony, it just makes it yeah, even more difficult. Powerful. And ultimately, to really know what it is we're looking at, you know, we would need a sample in our hand under a microscope or to do the genetics on um, to tie back to these images. So, um, great stuff. Let's see if we can finish it off with a full yeah, screen. Thank you, Scott. That's the voice of Scott France from the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. So we have been joined uh, by Nicola Rodriguez. Uh, she's taking Matt yeah, Dornbeck's place next to me, who's going to help Go with the annotations. You got it. Lasers are and off. So the unfortunate thing is that Nicola has made sure that there is no chance of us seeing a vampire squid in the vampire toothus today. Why is that? <laughs> because she ate a lot of kimchi for lunch. That's why. Oh, so it's there's no chance anymore of that. So, and she's here in the control room. So that's it. Anyway, um, that's probably a good thing you're sitting next to her then. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're moving up slope. I think that's our trio of bad jokes. So we'll probably leave it at that today. And we got sort of a mixed, consolidated, unconsolidated substrate. Here's a Proisocrinus ruberimus. We've been seeing them uh, periodically throughout the day. And we could probably pass on this pilot. We've got a bunch of footage on that already. Yeah, Roger that. Yep. Pushing ahead. All right, pilot, you're starting to go slightly to my starboard. And there's there. another one up there. It's actually turning out to be one of the more dominant yeah. sessile faunas here at this site. Noticed that uh, it can be very numerous when it does occur. Is that a fan-shaped coral there in the distance? It is. Well, there's a couple things coming up, actually. And I wonder if this is our first coral yet. Yeah, this fan shape one here is a first record for the day. Hey, come on in, Roland. All right, go ahead. It'll tilt down to the uh, heart of the. Uh, yep, it's definitely a coralid and it's a hemichorallium. You can see one of the polyps closed where you can actually see sort of these columnar scales, I've forgotten what they're called, that are in the calices, which is distinctive of the genus hemichorallium versus uh, something, a different genus in that family, pleurichorallium, which doesn't have nearly as elongate. I wish I could remember the, their type of sclerites, but I can't remember what their specific name is. And twisted amongst the, the coral is one of these brittle stars, Chris. Can I throw out a question to you guys? Uh, I noticed when these uh, associate the brittle stars are on there that the corals don't seem to react to the brittle star touching the polyps. Where I see any other creature that comes by, it, you know, it tries to capture them. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, the associates, at least these snake stars, uh, are, you know, fairly intimately connected with them. They stay with them even after death. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all if they've just somehow managed to become uh, sort of acclimated or uh, um, friendly. That's too human a word, but, you know, the, that the relationship is somehow uh, beneficial to both, and so the corals don't need to defend themselves against them um even the uh that little tiny brittle star that's a there's a little white brittle star that is not a uraelid like these others 
but uh, even that seems to be sort of below the the threshold of uh, contempt by the coral. So um, it's hard to say which of the uh, commensals have that kind of relationship. Copy that. Lasers are off. I think it's an interesting observation that Roland makes there, and it's possible that, you know, you could look at the corals where the polyps are extended and not being affected by the associate, meaning they're not withdrawing, and then from there perhaps infer that this is a close association, and so they have developed that relationship where um, as Chris said, they may be acclimated uh, to the associate, whereas when you see something clambering over the coral and all of the polyps are withdrawing, that would suggest it's not a very close association or even that it's a predatory association. So V coral just went past lasers? Well, we've got an unbranched uh, bamboo Possible here coming black. up on the left. Can take a peek at this. Uh, pilot, so I'd be about seven five see if my it's camera. something that we've already. You should be stopping about here, copilot. All right, come on in. Copy that. Go ahead. Uh, it looks like the same thing to me, Scott. Is that what it looks like to you? The, the same uh, clay to zectomysis? Yep. Yeah, just waiting for this uh, zoom. Yeah, I'm certainly not seeing prominent okay, needles. Very close. And, uh, you know, because of the angle, this is an angle that's somewhat different from the last one we saw, so it's a little bit harder to see the reflection of the uh, sclerite. I actually don't see any sclerite in the uh, polyp body wall. It doesn't mean they're not there. It just means they're not catching the light quite right. Um, so I'm going to... Oh, there we go. So I see on that one. Yeah, it looks like it's a lot of scales. I'll bet this is another B. I agree. Okay, thank you. I think we're good, pilot. Yeah, come on up. Yeah, but I'd be at 8.5, but um, I don't think I'm swinging anymore. Coming up to the potential. Yeah. In orders. There's a lot of round, bouldery kind of rocks as we go up slope. Kind of curious. We heard John Smith talk about this earlier on today, whether or not this was anywhere near the shore, but it doesn't look like it. How would you have a peak that isn't kind of eroded if it was at the shoreline? There you go, really. But could just be uh, the somewhere there on the left. Um, coating is on. on these rocks. That's what we're seeing. Right there it is above laser. To the right. Go ahead. Ah, good eyes. Black we have coral. a black coral. I think this is the first one that we've seen today. And what, what is this one? Second one, I think. Second one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was at lunch for the first one. The, the first one, the one you saw, was it like this one? I believe so. Scott identified it, I think. Um, no, this is different from the one we saw earlier. Uh, this is either, what, a, possibly a trisopathies, I guess. Um, the one we saw earlier, I thought, may have been a bathopathies or something like it. And this is definitely different. Much smaller uh, polyps very short pinules, which is the term they give for the uh, branches that arise from the main stem. Is that a worm? Yeah, or? something weird on the left branch. The oh, top. it's like a worm. Yeah. I feel like a hydroid, maybe? Maybe a hydroid, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's a tubular hydroid, I think, coming off of the front face of it. You can see the stalk on it as well. Yeah, thank you, pilot. Full cool screen. Go ahead. Video's clear. Okay. Oh, no. Looks like there's a sponge or something out. Out here. As far no. as another Ritagorja. Ritagorja. And you saw a sponge somewhere, huh? No, that